Namaste. So today we read this wonderful poem, Invitation. See, there are two poems which should have been the road during the Alipur jail period. One is Invitation and the other is Who. And it's very interesting. If you read Invitation, he is rising above all the you know, situations, circumstances where, you know, he could be incarcerated, he could even face death sentence. This is one approach where when we are faced with difficult situation, how to rise above them? At one place, Shurabindra says that the difference between the ordinary and the extraordinary is this. Everybody meets with crisis. 99% people break down. But 1% rise above it. And he gives the example, story of two birds who are, you know, they are trying to teach their child to fly and the child drops in the sea. This story he tells means it's not directly told by Shurabindo, but this is what in that uh, famous book, The Lost Footsteps, Silvio, that prisoner in concentration camp who started seeing apparitions of Shurabindo. And he would call him Robin Dogos because he couldn't get the word Orbin Dogos. Mm. So he would come and teach him. You know, he wanted to commit suicide and Shubindu would come, his apparition, and talk to him regularly. He made him come out of suicide and then, you know, he ended up leading a very meaningful life. So one day he tells him the story of two birds and one of the child falls into the ocean. Now you can do nothing about it. But these two birds, instead of giving up, they pick up water, each drops of water in the beak and come and throw it on the shore, hoping to empty the ocean. Now, it may sound ridiculous to a practical person, but not knowing that though outwardly this is a foredoomed failure, but inwardly this will pave the way for a future strength. So, when we act even in the most impossible circumstances and situations even if still we lose outwardly we have gained in a kind of strength which we inherit when we come back so that's, that's why we should never succumb to situation and circumstances but always learn to rise high at least to face them and invitation is about that at the same time in fact he is using the word invitation so if you are ready to do that then you come with me but if you are afraid, there are people who want to escape from life, who are, you know, find uh, this world too painful to bear. And as the mother puts it, if you cannot face the challenges of the world, how will you face the much greater challenges of spiritual life? And the second poem, who, which is the second attitude one can take, is to find him everywhere. That's what should have been the experience. He experienced both these things in Alipur jail. One is how to rise above circumstances and situations and turn it into a means for ascension. And the second was where he sees the divine everywhere, where he sees Vasudeva in the jail, in the blanket, in the bar, in the council and in the judge and in the courtroom, in the bowl in his hands, in the rice that he was getting. So this is the second approach where we see the divine in everyone and everything. So that's the poem who. So today we read Invitation. So we often find, you know, Bhagavat Sapta and Bhagavat Katha, invitations go, Ek Hajar Aad Baad Sri Swamiji Padhare, Aap Aayye, Sun Ke Chale Jaiye. But you know, come and listen to the discourse. But there is a world of difference between talking about yoga and walking the path of yoga. And that's why yoga is not meant for everybody. Uh, there are many things which one can benefit from the teachings. For instance, Shobindo's teachings and the mother's teaching, if you see, they span a wide range of things about, you know, girls, women, boys, competitions, how to concentrate better, how to conserve energy, whole education of different layers, all this is there and many, many, every aspect of human life, which is wonderful. How to sleep, how to eat, how human relationships, relationship with plants, animals, everything. So there is a lot of uh, wealth which one gathers. But there is a difference between taking this wealth and benefiting and you know enriching one's life and walking the path of yoga. Because yoga means now you are going upstream. All this you can practice while you are still on level ground. 
it will prevent you from going downstream it will give you a slight ingredient in life you are moving up but yoga if you see the painting of the mother ascend to the truth sketch you know they have a model here in uh, pondicherry beach also then you see ascend to truth is a strenuous conquest and it's not meant for everybody and shubhendra says in ancient times it was there was something known as adhikar bhed so people were initiated even now many yogis initiate they don't just accept everybody yet shubhendra and the mother especially the mother toward the later time she started gathering everybody and the reason is because she embodied grace so it is only the grace that can if you rely on grace you have a chance but if we look at yoga in terms of uh, simply practice not the practice as it is taught today half an hour or two hours meditation sit and lead your life the way you are but the real yoga is not an easy thing because you have to first of all one has to be very individualized the mother says that the first step of yoga individualization means you have to be able to make your choices it requires certain strength people will tell you society will tell you things and yet you stand by your choices this increases the power of truth inside the power of conviction the inner strength and then you are ready for the next step after the individuality is formed which takes long time nature has labors for at least a few lives before one becomes an individual before that one is a product of the mass so when somebody is a product of the mass and he says mother i am surrendering this to you she will she has written, actually said this that you have nothing of yours to surrender so first become an individual now you can imagine individual stage of development is when you are opposed by all the forces of society and convention and yet you stand by the truth of your purpose whatever the truth may be so this is the first part then you have to start walking upstream it's madness somebody will say it's madness people will ask questions like you know okay super mind is it there yeah have you seen anybody is there a specimen have you actually seen the super mind at the end what are you going to do you will say i have faith in mother and shurabindo that's the only perfect answer mind you you can say i had glimpses and all this but perfect answer where you there is no doubt about Yes, I have faith in Shubhendra and the mother. That is not questionable. And Shubhendra and the mother have seen; they know what they are speaking. And I have the faith, and therefore I have the courage to follow them. It required that courage, because people may say that look all kinds of things. So yoga is an adventure where you hang sometimes with nothing but faith. And all achievements, great achievements, are like that. Imagine the first man Edmund Hillary who climbed Mount Everest the first man Neil Armstrong who set his foot on moon a lot of people would have called it madness don't try it it's impossible you may die yes everything yet they went so this is how those who are ready to take the risk and the challenge they move into the future and there is a very beautiful essay of shurbindo on future he says the future is a sphinx with two heads you know sphinx is always like that she poses a question if you answer rightly you get immortal life she lets you pass if you don't you perish so the future is comes with a wager and a poser meaning the why there is a risk and a reward take the risk and then you go through it if you don't take the risk if you want everything to be uh, you know settled for sure god to write and give you that look you know at the end of 20 years you will become at least a superman 30 40 years down the line supramental process will start in your head your hair colors will change and then your knee uh, at least in one life two lives definitely you will uh, be a supramental being then yoga doesn't operate like that because then the strength that is required for yoga will not develop it is only when there is challenging circumstances that the strength develops so this is the poem about that where we are being invited to the great adventure that yoga is and shurbindo is inviting us sending us an invitation letter that's how i look at many of shurbindo's writings in this vein not as a poem to be read with technicalities and all that it's not a sonnet it's an invitation it's a sonnet of course 
<laughs> and he is sending an invitation to all of us. With the wind and the weather beating round me, up to the hill and the moorland I go. So he starts with that, that when, as long as we want to tow the line that everybody tows in life, you will see that you won't face so many obstacles. The day you want to do something which is different, suddenly wind and the weather beating around me. The entire world as if, you know, will start revolting. I have seen people come with that and I have often asked, why are you so much, you know, um, against whoever is the person in your family? The person is wanting to take up yoga and spiritual life. What is the problem? I understand if he is going to, you know, take a life of a degenerate drug peddler. It's, it's a beautiful thing. But suddenly everything, all kinds of examples, practicality, all life is yoga, all these things will come to prevent you. Now he is asking us, who will come with me? Who will climb with me? Wade through the brook and tramp through the snow. On one side is the company of the Lord. See, Krishna is calling. Who will come with me? Who will walk with me? Oh, you will play flute? We can sit and enjoy? No, sir. <laughs> Battlefield of Kurukshetra. Oh, okay, but your Sudarshan Chakra. We don't care. Come. No, no, no. I am not going to lift a weapon. <laughs> now you will start wondering. That's the Kurukshetra of life. Who will come with me? Who will walk with me, climb with me? It's a climb, it's not a walk. They used to, this I used to feel, you know, when they would, some people have this, uh, you know, walk. Uh, now, of course, they've started half marathon and marathon walk. It started even in Singapore. Walk, like a yoga walk. All this is fine. But the walk of yoga is a very different thing, you know. <laughs> it is against, up the incline, against gravity. I personally feel that for people who want to be really, if you want to make the walk into a symbol of yoga, then don't keep the level walk and simply say in whatever time. Keep an incline. At least there is some something which, you know, will challenge you. Incline, there is no challenge. This is not symbolic of yoga. It's more like a bonhomie, a party and, you know. Make an incline, let's see how many would really. <laughs> so it's really. But that's what yoga is about. It's incline. It's against the pull of nature. The pull of nature is gravity. That's why even in normal life, when you start climbing up an incline, you, you're, uh, you become breathless because that's how it is. And then, not in the petty circle of cities crammed by your doors. And your walls I dwell. You want to capture me and keep me there? Give me all kinds of, you know, privileges and, you know, perks and want me to live there. Shubhendu had an offer. Just imagine how steadfast a yogin has to be. He was given an offer by the French government to be in Algeria. So, everybody was very happy because British government will drop all the cases. He would be given big land and everything. So what more you want? You will get land, you will get money, French government support, patronized and at the end of the day, British government also, you are a free man, pursue yoga. So everybody was very happy, waiting for Sri answer. Sri stays silent for a few minutes and then he says, I am not going to budge an inch from here. That is the spirit of yoga. Such are the ones, I mean he has given by his own example, what is the stuff of which yogis are made of, real stuff. Not in the petty circle of cities, you know city life is symbolic also of desires, all cities develop around desire, this is a big problem of city life. If you see any city, now Pondicherry is a little different because of Sri presence, but generally you go to Delhi, you go to Hastinapur, you go to Kolkata, anywhere. Cities start developing around desire. That's why people from the villages go to city for money. And they will have some cultural hubs. But basically the center is desire. Bombay, the city that never sleeps. New York, Paris, London, anywhere you go. It develops around that. So he's saying that is not my life. Which is surrounded by such things. 
crammed by your doors and your walls I dwell. I have abandoned all comfort zone. Doors and walls is man seeks comfort zones. Physical, psychological. He says, let them be blown away. I don't care. Over me, God is blowing the welkin. So who is the one who is protecting me? Who is my roof? God is my roof. He is my shelter. Against me, the wind and the storm rebel. So wind and storm, they are all indicative of the vital forces. So all the vital forces, they rebel against me. Within and without, they are two terms of the same thing. You see, against Shurbindo, outwardly also so many challenges and difficulties, even when he came here. They tried to put him into jail under all kinds of false charges, sedition and conspiracy. Papers were planted inside the well. All this is a piece of history. And of course, within, what he must have faced, what he must have gone through, about which we don't know much. But he has said that, yes, I have had to face all the difficulties that human nature faces. So when you go, who will be your companion? So you want to take a journey to Pondicherry. Who will come? Who will come? And then people say that, you know, I must get a call from Pondicherry. Mother will call me. Meaning thereby a ticket she will send along with the telegram, with the request, please come. Without you, we can't live. <laughs> It doesn't work like that. <laughs> so very often people are, hey, when others are coming, we'll go together. It doesn't work like that. So here he says, I sport with solitude here in my regions. One of the cardinal qualities required for readiness for spiritual life. Mother speaks about it, Shurvindu speaks about it and the Gita speaks about it. You can spot the man marked for spiritual life from this one quality. He is not afraid of solitude. He is happy in solitude. He likes solitude. And even in the crowd, he is in solitude. All these capacities. So this is the quality of a person marked out for spiritual life. But somebody who is always seeking, you know, party goer, party lover, my friends, I must go with them. Then one is not really ready for the spiritual life. This marked both by mother speaks about it and of course the Gita speaks about it. So who will walk with us? I sport with solitude here in my regions. Of misadventure have made me a friend. So several times yoga is not a straight climb, you know. You will fall, you will hurt yourself, sometimes avalanche, sometimes snowstorms, sometimes snow blindness. Sometimes it's smooth also. It's not that all the time it's like that. Sometimes temperatures will go to minus zero, several degrees. You say it's okay. There is a joy in it. This I literally can connect with it even as a, you know, experience of this solitude and misadventure. Three months of um, staying in base camp of CHN. Uh, so there... Hardly your temperatures will fall to minus 10 easily. So what do you do? There is not so much of this thing. So you, so I remember reading the whole synthesis sitting inside my room. Daytime, go out, take a walk and come back. And evenings again alone by the side of Shiok River. One of the most beautiful moments. I just can't, you know, I wish to capture those days. <laughs> precisely because of the solitude. And the time you get. So once you are inside the room, whatever time. So I would just sit, read the synthesis, then sleep at your own time, then wake up. It's something so amazing. So that gives you a great joy. Misadventure has made me a friend. This too we faced in a helicopter. The fuel was about to get over and we were surrounding by, surrounded by the clouds and didn't know how to come out. Not me, but the pilot. I was in the helicopter. So, <laughs> so misadventure. It's life is full of all kinds of things. If we start, okay, give us an assurance, a surety, security. No, take the joy of the unexpected. Actually, there are people who get so worried about the unexpected. Enjoy the unexpected because God also is met unexpectedly. In the most unexpected way. So if you are afraid of unexpected, then so take it. It's part of life anyways. The only thing you can expect in life is unexpectedness. 
<laughs> there is nothing which is uh, only thing certain about life is the uncertainty that all the time walks by your side this is you know actual real life and real who would live largely who would live freely here to the wind swept uplands ascend are you ready to live largely why largely get rid of these little cramped up comfort zones small desires in whose uh, cage we are living like the parrot who is very happy to say all the mantras that you teach him because he'll be given free one chili and some chana that's not life but who would live largely you want to be a parrot or you want to be a swan hansa and he goes right up to the uplands man sarovar who are you willing to live largely and freely freely by freely means uh, nothing of the ego desire which all the time tie us to small little petty things the most miserable life is actually life of desires <laughs> because you are never happy you have it and the next one is right behind it's like a queue what is that uh, where you know people in queue keep slotting around so you think this is the desire i want so the moment you 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 have it then the next one comes yes now my turn so you think this is the uh, you know some people think that by satisfying desire you can ultimately get rid of it doesn't work like that so the moment you have satisfied it the third one will come so it'll keep on coming then one day you feel you are getting hooked to desire so what to do now disengaging becomes difficult but one has to disengage at some point one has to learn to disengage this is a normal process in everyone so who would live freely then we are free nobody has held us back nobody binds us it's our own desires that bind us and hook us and hold us our own attachments attachments are of often indicated in dream visions by strings and uh, if you see a lot of strings around you it's a sign of attachment and that's why i really appreciate the man who wrote this song moh moh ke dhage it's actually dhage you, you know there are strings of consciousness if you have the occult vision you can actually see strings that go and tie strings and of course this how the world is organized not that it is bad it's not about bad and good attachment is natural at human level that's what makes us human it's not becoming indifferent it's going beyond attachment into love which is a far more powerful force so this is who would live largely who would live freely here to the wind swept uplands ascend so who do you find there what is that lord whom you find there i am the lord of tempest and mountain shiva the mighty the majestic is sitting there ever free that's why he's sitting there and where does his journey starts journey starts from shamshan burn your ego then start your journey <laughs> then you go there <laughs> by the time you reach there <laughs> now he sits majestic but for that one smile krishna also takes krishna's journey is actually far tougher it looks like you know it's uh, easier why krishna is dancing charming this is the image we have of krishna playing the flute and you can dance through no krishna will take you first through the dance <laughs> hook you to the dance and then say no kuru chetra now you have to make a choice dying taking the danger of risk of dying on the battlefield of kuru chetra or burning in the pyre but without dying this is a very nice saying in hindi बिना मरे स्वर्ग नहीं मिलता है यू वॉन्ट हैव एन यू हैव टू डाई फर्स्ट सो मदर पुट इट वेरी ब्यूटिफुली सिज पीपल कम एंड टेल मी लाइफ इज सो मिजरेबल सो मिजरेबल सो डिफिकल्ट आई वॉन्ट टू डाई वॉन्ट टू डाई देन शी लाव से ओके देन डाई टू द ईगो डाई डाई टू द ईगो देन यू विल नो मोर फील द नीड देन यू विल नो मोर फील लाइफ इज मिजरेबल लाइफ विल बी डिलाइट सो देर इज द लॉर्ड नाउ हियर श्योर बिंदो एश माइटी मेजेस्टिक शिवा he is self declaring who he is in the next one he is krishna at he is at work in the heart of the spheres but here he is majestic shiva i am the lord of tempest and mountain you think that the tempest was some play of the world i am the lord even the tempest is me the same beneficent shiva has become rudra why what does rudra do gives us a good beating you can't beat him so but 
in the bargain, what does Rudra do? He makes us strong enough to climb the mountain. You can't reach Shiva if you have not faced Rudra. So Rudra is also Shiva, tempest, but Lord of the tempest is Shiva, who is, this is Rudra, tempest and the storm, and there he is majestic and mighty Shiva. So first he says that the storm will rebel. You have to face it and climb. This is the law of the way. And forces intangible will oppose. As long as you are leading a normal life, everything will be fine. Even people and events, circumstances which one had never imagined, they will stand on the way. Because such is the law of evolution. So if we want that everybody should be fine, happy with whatever you are doing in terms of spiritual life and upscaling ourselves, going up against the gradient, then one will wait forever. And look here again, he describes his Shiva Swarup. I am the spirit of freedom and pride. Again we see turning a negative into a positive. Spirit of freedom. What is that freedom which we seek? We seek Swachandata. I'll do whatever I feel like. That's not freedom. That is a mistranslation of freedom. What is true freedom? Spirit of freedom is Swatantrata. I am the master. Yes, I will do what I feel like, but not feel like, but what I decide, that I will do. So you see the little difference. Driven by desire is what we understand by freedom. Driven by the divine will is true freedom. So I am the spirit of freedom. Seeking after freedom is the legitimate birthright of man. And it's natural. But in the here it is distorted into doing whatever I feel like. That is the asuric freedom. That like many things have been distorted in this world. One of them is the idea of freedom. So the idea of freedom is whatever I feel like. But if you see in the ancient Indian thought, freedom was meant to be Swami. I am the one who is the master of myself. I choose. I will. And according to the will, I act. So this is called freedom. So I am the spirit of freedom and pride. How can pride be something divine? Pride becomes divine when you refuse to bow down to the lowness of earth nature. You know what do proud people do? I am proud. This is too low. That's how pride is associated with that. So what is the spirit of pride? I won't stoop to the ways of the world and its mud and the, you know, um, murk and all this. I will not stoop. I refuse to stoop to that. And that is the legitimate pride of the gods. So this is the spirit of freedom and pride. So if you see, this pride aspect is very beautifully in a series of flowers. Dahlia. You know, if you see, the names are very interesting. There is a Dahlia which is called as vanity. Then there is a Dahlia which is called... Um, pride. Hmm? pride. Pride. Then there is a Dahlia which is called nobility. Yeah. Then there is a Dahlia which is called superhumanity. Imagine, <laughs> it's a transformation of vanity. <laughs> vanity is when you have nothing. In fact, very often, people who have nothing are vain. <laughs> vain glorious. Why? Because you want to compensate. You, everybody wants something. But when you have nothing, what do you, oh, I am, if nothing else, my lineage. Often you will see people, especially youngsters, ministers, son and all these people, who will say, I am this minister's son. You should stop them and say, but who are you? <laughs> I am not interested in your dad. <laughs> so, that is vanity. Where you have nothing, but you just are puffed up. Then comes a pride, where there is something, it is still egoistic. But there is something about which you are proud. So, proud pride is something which is legitimate. But human, it is still, it is not yogic. Then there is nobility. Nobility is uddat. You have something, but yet you are noble enough not to, you know, braggart and show off and, you know, you are not pride. Nobility is something where uh, a noble person will never, you know, put down somebody because he is someone. That is the difference between a noble king. They are generous. They are wide, large-hearted. They will not make somebody feel low. A noble person, a proud will. Proud person will say, that you don't know who I am? And the person is something, let us say. 
let's say you are a big man in the military and somebody who is uh, stops you at the gate because he doesn't know now it is his work duty to stop you you don't know who i am <laughs> he doesn't know <laughs> i am so and so sorry sir sorry sir now that's pride when you are nobody and you say how dare you stop me you don't know you know i have lot of money then that is vanity but nobility is when you are stopped at the gate you are the big officer you say okay boy good you are doing your job okay show me the register write your name show the i card and then you walk you don't feel bad about it so that's nobility nobility is always associated with generosity of the soul but beyond it is super humanity who is benevolent compassionate not only he will write show the identity card and write and say boy you done a good job he will feel the compassion for his duty so how long you have been in duty sir last eight hours so oh, is it you don't get off in between who are there at your home and then if it is within your means you will help the person this is called super humanity and the classic example is shurbindo and the baroda maharaja when they are walking and they see a woman old lady who you know uh, is let off guard and the the burden she is carrying on the head falls on the floor and she bends down to pick up and the maharaja rushes picks up the burden and puts it on her head this is nobility all <laughs> surrender <laughs> with a little bit of pride so he looks at shurvindo in the pride element see i am a great man well it's a good thing he has done no doubt a maharaja to go and do it it's a good thing but shurvindo says yes this is what everybody has been doing taking the burden and putting it back on the person's head but a true king should create ways and means that a woman at her age doesn't have to suffer the burden and walk like this that is sure bindu the super humanity where he nurturing in his heart not one lady or another person but a dream of the future there is this beautiful story about nilani devi sitting in shillong with sure bindu's sister sarojini and you know if you see shillong it's a many tired city and if you are on the uh, top uh, what is called as upper shillong and shillong peak so from there when you look down at night you will see a string of lights like pearls a necklace of lights very beautiful so shivindu sister says isn't it beautiful baudi bhabi sister in law isn't it beautiful and milani devi tells her you know there is a much more beautiful city in the heart of your brother that city is oroville yeah much more beautiful city in the heart of a brother she knew what he is carrying inside that is super humanity where you are doing something far greater but you see how the transformation from vanity through pride to nobility to super humanity so i am the spirit of freedom and pride so what should i do sir to come to your course attend your course lord shurbindo how many dollars can i pay off and sign up which link zoom link what link you prefer you will say the link part is very simple it is surrender bhakti link <laughs> what do we pay nothing much the same old price what ego <laughs> so <laughs> what should i bring with me i have lot of things in my home i want to bring bag baggage everything but i need space so i hope you will provide me enough space to keep all my things <laughs> so he says <laughs> stark must he be and a kinsman to danger you see new sense of the word digambar and you know the jain sadhu who suppose this is the meaning stark stark literally means naked please not shedding of the clothes <laughs> somebody came to shurbindo uh, wanted to meet him see the difference vanity and all this so he was a sadhu 
and who had gone to all the four quarters, all the four dhamas, tirthas, and he wanted to meet Shurabindu. And Shurabindu said, no, guest house. So he said, no, no. First he said that I have got a command from Parashakti. So when Shurabindu was informed, he says, very inconvenient Parashakti, that only he has the command, I don't have the command to see. <laughs> But he doesn't believe. He says, no, I will go. And if he doesn't see me, I am going to shed my clothes one by one as I go. Stark, I will stand before him. <laughs> so when Shurabindu came to know, he said, I am horrified at <laughs> this man. But as he tried to ascend, just a few steps, he met with such a tremendous light and force that he ran back, literally ran from the stairs and went away running saying, my God, my God, I was making a mistake of trying to see him. So, stark must he be. Who can bear the touch of God? The force that slays and saves. That is how Sri says. It's not easy to live near the divine. Because you can't uh, live in lie. See, often people ask, what is the difference between ashram life and the world? So this is what I say. God is here. World is here. Yes. God is here. World is there. Both. Both everywhere. God is there and world is there. So the difference, when you live in the world, the ways of the world are completely steeped in falsehood. Things are a little better now. But you see what happens. It's a way of life. You breathe it. And you don't find anything amiss about it. Telling a lie is a norm. Here, if you tell a lie, it can't remain hidden. That's the problem. <laughs> it's a big issue. Why? Because there, the world is trying to stifle the divine child. He is in the cradle, like Krishna in the cradle and Putna and all these are trying to stifle. God is there. He will grow up, no doubt. God shall grow up while the wise men talk and sleep. But it's going to be a long struggle. It's not easy to live in the world and yet not be of the world. Ask Vibhishna, he will tell us. You know, when Vibhishna is asked by Hanuman, how are you living in this Lanka? And calling Rama, he says, he describes, Susidas describes, like the tongue lives between the 32 teeth. <laughs> you don't know when it will be bit. Ever experience the tongue bite? How painful it can be, accidental bite, and yet it lives. This is like that I am living. So that is a kind of life in the world. God is there, but living like the tongue, <laughs> surrounded by teeth. Here also God is there, but he is surrounding the world and pressing it, pressing and pressing and pressing to change. So here you experience the pressure of transformation. It is there outside also, but it is... Slowly, it's like a regulated dose. And here it's a solid, tremendous pressure. Everybody knows and everybody experiences. This is a universal experience. If you start living here, you will see all the defense. Once the defense against the eye of the master and the light of the ideal, now become a gap in thy armor and invite a blow. This is what happens. So you can't let things remain buried. It will come out. So... Stark must he be and a kinsman to danger who shares my kingdom and walks at my side. Very easy to say, Lord, I want to be like Arjuna, no? Such a beautiful story. <laughs> I want to be like Arjuna. <laughs> Motilal Roy actually wrote to Shirpindo. I want to participate in your mission. Shrabindu says, I do not ask anybody to participate in my mission. <laughs> because to participate in my mission means what? And then he describes, it means the willingness to take upon yourself all the dangers. Of course, this is before the mother has finally arrived. And he didn't know, look at the irony of the whole thing. He didn't know that the one who can prevent all these dangers will become for him the Issue. So he, you know, he asked Shurabindu, I want to marry, and he has written a book also, Mary Jeevan Sangini. 
And Shubhendu said, don't, you know, because all this, no, I want to create a Grihastha Ashram, world has to change, so world has to be replaced, all these thoughts. Shubhendu says, you are misunderstanding what I have said. No, 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 he, you know, even if you go there, his statue is there, his and his wife. And in spite of that, Shubhendu, with all his compassion, would give him utmost, uh, you know, attention and time. Then one day, the mother came not one day, but from 1926, 24th November, the arrangement was that you could not go to Shurbindo without going through the mother. One of the first casualties was Motilal Roy. He couldn't accept it. I am the Bhakta. See the egoism of Bhakta. How can I not have an excess? I can storm into it, but not realizing that, you know, surrender. If the Lord says it, Lord says it. Even if you don't understand anything. That's what I often say. People who speak of mother and Shurabindu as if they are. So ask them, do you believe in, have faith in Shurabindu? Yes. So he has told mother is the path. Then what is the problem? Even if you look at it very logically. Of course, best is an inner revelation. But he has said, you have faith in Shurabindu. This is what he has said. It's his arrangement. What is the problem? But this is where, you know, one can. Many, many things come as a hurdle when one takes to the path of yoga. That's what he is reminding us here, that yoga is not like French without tears or French made easy. All yoga is difficult and he reminds us in his letter of Shurashya Dhara Nishitha Duratya Kavyo Vedanti. Hard is the path, sharp is the razor's edge. So one has to be vigilant, one has to be careful. It's a journey, it's a long journey, tremendous journey, delightful journey, dangerous journey. If you're not willing to lose all, then you are not a candidate for getting all. And it's true that you will get all, but you can't start the journey with this idea. All aims were lost in her, then found in her. His base was gathered in one pointing spire. He who is not ready to lose everything for the sake of the divine does not find the divine. This is the dictum of the ages. Yes, then the transformation and the world and the change of worldly life, all this will start subsequently. But the first step is the first step. So we read this entire poem now, Invitation, Shobindo's Invitation Letter. <laughs> and this is the poem which is printed on it. That's it. With wind and the weather beating round me. People often ask, when you are coming to ashram, what kind of arrangement, accommodation you will get? What kind of, you know, is the attached bathroom or not, all these things. How many days before you start getting dining room food, straight away say this application is rejected. It doesn't work like that. You have to take the leap and discover. Yes, things will work out. Maybe much better than you could even imagine. But it doesn't start like, it's a non-starter. The journey to the divine doesn't start. You are drawn by love. Or at least by the enthusiasm, the joy of belonging to the Lord. The joy of that, that you know, this is it. The fact, by, the, by this aspiration that takes hold and says, nothing else I want in my life but this. It's difficult, doesn't matter. It's very difficult, doesn't matter. Extremely difficult, doesn't matter. Then one is ready for the yoga. Otherwise, mother says, I would suggest, go back, prepare yourself, get ready. One day, of course, live life beautifully, be a good human being. One day you'll have, everybody has to take to this path, the path of yoga. But one must know the difference. So here he is revealing to us, with wind and the weather beating round me, up to the hill and the moorland I go. Who will come with me? Who will climb with me? Wade through the brook and tramp through the snow. Walking is difficult in snow, you know. Tramp through the snow. Not in the petty circle of cities, crammed by your doors and your walls I dwell. Over me, God is blue in the welkin. Against me, the wind and the storm rebel. Sport. I sport with solitude here in my regions. Of misadventure have made me a friend. Who would live largely? Who would live freely? Here to the wind swept uplands ascend. 
I am the Lord of tempest and mountain. He's showing his Shiva and Rudra Roop. I am the Lord of tempest and mountain. I am the spirit of freedom and pride. Stark must he be and a kinsman to danger who shares my kingdom and walks at my side. <laughs> Namaste.